Hey yo, what's up guys? Mr. Kai Drix here again doing another video for you guys today. In today's video I'm going to be doing a review on a Godzilla figure. This is a new thing I decided to do on my channel where I take a Godzilla figure that has been reviewed commonly on YouTube and I decided to compare it to see whether or not the design still holds up well to the suit. And I'm going to be doing this with a lot of my Godzilla figures as well as some monsters from the films. And I'm also going to be doing it with some Gamera and Ultraman figures. And I decided to start this by reviewing none other than the original Godzilla. Now this Godzilla appeared in the first ever Godzilla movie called Gojira, or Godzilla King of the Monsters here in America. And this Godzilla has also appeared in other movies, mostly as stock footage, and to show that the continuity shares the same as the original Godzilla. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Godzilla Island version of the monster. Now, I got this figure from a comic book store, and it's a second-hand comic book store. So I didn't get it new, that's why it has a couple of paint scuffs on it. And yeah, so let's just get into the review. Um, so basically in these reviews, um, I'm going to be describing the detail, the articulation, and I'm going to see whether or not it holds up well to the design of the suit it appeared in the film and compare some differences to it as well as give some gripes and just typically what I would do in a regular review. So let's start off with detail. Now the detail on this Godzilla is actually pretty nice, I have to admit. Um, it's your typical Bandai Godzilla figure so you expect that the detail will be nice. As you can see all the scales have been individually sculpted and it does have texture on them. Is the head of the Godzilla. As we know, this head of the Godzilla um, was very different compared to all the other Godzilla designs that were soon to come. As you can see, it's got indications of scales on its head, there's the ear, there's the eyebrow, the spikes that go down from the head all the way down, leading up to the giant dorsal plates on its back. And those have little intricate details. You can just see for yourself that this Godzilla has nice details. And it also has indications um, of folds that show that it's part of a suit. Which most people like. I mean, I like it too, but you know, Godzilla's supposed to be a monster, and even though these are accurate to the suit, I kind of wish they didn't show because, you know, you're not supposed to know that Godzilla is a suit. Your imagination is supposed to tell you that he's a monster. But nonetheless, the detail's still great all the way to the end of the tail. It's the feet, the hands, the head, teeth. If you look carefully inside the mouth, there's the tongue. So yeah, overall detail on this Godzilla is really nice. Um, he's painted in like a monochrome paint job, as in he's black and white. There are slight blue highlights on the dorsal plates here that run down to the tail. And I actually kind of like that because, you know, it kind of gives a depth, gives it a little something new to the monster because instead of just being white, you know, there's some highlights and it also kind of shows the detail. As I said before, mine has some paint scuffs on it. And I forgot to mention this in detail, but the spikes kind of run in their own directions. Uh, much like how the suit would in the movie because when you watch the movie as Godzilla moves his dorsal plates move like from left to right and up and down so it gives it that sporadic appearance on this figure by having the spikes go in different directions so as you can see the eyes have that yeah, black and white with the people facing down which was accurate for the suit Godzilla was always looking down and it gives it that very terrifying look that this Godzilla had. Because this Godzilla isn't really your typical Godzilla. Like we see in other Showa movies or in other Heisei movies, Millennium movies. This Godzilla was obviously meant to represent nuclear destruction. As in like, he's supposed to represent the effect of the atomic bomb that landed in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. 
And because of that, this Godzilla has quite a demonic appearance. He's not really that... Um, he's not really, like, as kid-friendly or as, um, like... How can I say this? Intimidating looking? Like, he's intimidating in this movie. Incredibly intimidating. But if we were to compare this to other Godzilla's designs, this one stands out for being possibly one of the creepiest because there's his eyes, like I said, in a paint job. They just look very terrifying as they're always looking down. And as you can see the claws are white. There's the highlight on the chest and the knees, which again, this isn't really on the suit. They just added it to give it depth, like for example on the head, although you can kind of see it on the head. Mine has a bit of dust. It's been sitting on the shelves. I said before, the spikes are blue, and a gray-blue color, and then it runs all the way down to the tail. And as I said before, mine's got quite a few paint scuffs, as you can see on the toes. Like, even this toe over here is starting to lose most of its paint. As well as on the claws, the teeth are just fine, the eyes are just fine. The dorsal plates, the scuff. So I've been on the debates of whether or not I should get a new figure of this Godzilla, but... I don't think I really would need it as I still have this one. If I And even if I do get a new figure just for the paint job, you know, it's the same figure so it's really nothing new. And it's just going to get rid of space in my shelf for my collection. Now the articulation on this figure is basic. Um, the arms, they move through 60. The legs, they also move through 60. Uh, the tail used to move, but on my figure it started getting loose over time so I decided to super glue it. But it did actually um, rotate 360 all the way. Now, I'm going to do some size comparisons. Um, since this Godzilla didn't fight any other monsters, I don't have any um, other monsters to compare it to. Um, but if we were going to go for Godzilla Raids again, I would compare it to an Angiris figure, but seeing as I don't have one yet, I'll just compare it to um, characters from other shows that feature kaijus and or films. So let's start off with Ultraman. <laughs> Now this Ultraman is based on the 500 series, so it's about 5 inches tall. And from what's been said, Ultraman's 40 meters, and Godzilla, as we know in the first movie, he's 50 meters. So I think this does work well. I mean, maybe Ultraman might need to be a little bit taller, maybe about there, but... It's mostly because this figure is based on a spark doll, meaning that it's about 5 inches tall. But I think this does hold up well. So there you go. And now I'm going to compare it to another monster that was inspired by Godzilla. Well, actually it rivaled against Godzilla, and it's from another company. It is none other than Gamera. Now, this really isn't that accurate. Um, I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but Godzilla is a little bit taller. And um, as I said before, this Godzilla in the movie was 50 meters. Whereas Gamera in his first movie appearance, he was about 60 meters, so at least he should be about there, from what I can assume. But, you know, nonetheless, this still does make a good comparison. And most people do actually prefer it when Gamera is shorter than Godzilla. And now, let's compare it to the suit from the actual movie. Now the suit from this movie um, is re represented really well in the figure, but I do have some minor gripes. First off, the bulk of this figure, um, I feel like it really doesn't match the suit. Um, I think it's a little bit too thin. If it was slightly bulkier, more towards the, um, the hips, um, like in this segment of the body, like on the ribs, the waist region I should, I should say, like if it was bulkier around the waist, I think it would be um, a bit more accurate, but you know, it is what it is because the figure was already made. I mean, it's still bulky, but that's just my minor gripe. I mean, some people might be okay with this, but that's just me because um, I think that would make it more accurate. And also the spikes, the spikes on the Godzilla suit were like, they look like this and they got the design accurately on like um, the front part of the spikes, but the backside really isn't done all that well as you can see it's kind of just sculpted in to the rest of the back which isn't accurate because it would come out more 
and show it would protrude out more like the spikes would come out and it isn't represented well in this figure and unfortunately this is what the Heisei Godzilla suffers as well and um, so yeah if it, if it had like a little bit more like detail of having the spikes on the fins come out more instead of being like flat like this then it would be accurate and if like those little like imperfections on the figure were fixed like for me if, the, if it was a little bit more bulkier at the waist and the spikes were fixed to look more accurate and this would be a great representation of the figure but nonetheless it still is a great representation of the monster that we see in the film I think I might have said figure but no I mean monster and it still holds up well it does look like the 1954 Godzilla you can look at it and identify it as the 1954 Godzilla and that's what I really like about this figure I do think it's better than the original Bandai creation figure and even the newer one and like I said, you know, if you ever come across this figure, which if you don't have it, um, go ahead and pick it up. Uh, Bandai is actually going to re-release it. Um, they're going to re-release their 1954 Godzilla. Um, and it looks like it's based on this design, um, not the re-release that came out around 2006. And they're also going to be re-releasing it alongside a Final Wars Guardian and a Final Wars in US. So... It, Collectors have another chance of getting this, but if not, you know, look up on eBay. He really isn't that expensive because he's a common uh, Godzilla. This is the one from the Godzilla Island series. Um, if you can find any kind, um, go ahead and pick it up because, you know, your collection really isn't complete unless you have some figure of the 1954 Godzilla. So I give this figure a 4 out of 5. It's a great figure. It holds up well to the 1954 Godzilla. And as I said before, if the little imperfections that bother me were fixed, this would be a perfect figure, but it still is a great figure overall. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, look forward to me bringing more reviews like this where I look back on figures to see if they hold up well. And the next figure I'll be reviewing will be the 1955 Metacom Godzilla. So I look forward to that. Alright, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this and this is Mr. Kydrick signing out. Stay awesome everyone.